life alive is what makes life worth getting up for every day. It's laughing, and we laugh a lot. So enjoy yourselves. We'll see you later. Avoiding falls and fractures. Watch <laughs> Hip Hip Hooray at 4 p.m. on In House Channel 21. No. 
Load him back into the pod, administer five cc's of Tranquilify, select medium heat, and rotate. I don't want scorch marks. And Stan, two med packs are missing. Stan, hello? Yes. Yes? I'm checking in. Name? Second floor. What? You tell that congressman I do not have the staff or supplies I was promised. Name? Uh, Taylor. Joseph. Joe. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Ah, here you are. Emphysema? Well, not too bad. Are you now or have you ever been a smoker? I was. Then you'll purchase your own oxygen. I see here it says you have prostate cancer. Are you incontinent? No. Uh, could you maybe keep your voice down? sort of private information, you know? You know what? No, I don't know. If you're referring to the privacy laws, sir, that were once contained in HIPAA, then perhaps you're unaware that HIPAA no longer exists. <laughs> if the taxpayer pays for your room and board, sir, then the taxpayer has every right to know what he's paying for. <laughs> I guess I missed a few things in the ICU. I guess you did. Name a first degree relative for rehoming purposes. Rehoming? A relative that you may wish to house you. No. Tony! What did this place used to be? Mm -hmm. This building, what was it originally? It was a federal penitentiary. <laughs> what happened to the prisoners? We outsourced them all to Pakistan. <laughs> Must be dozens of these by now. Yeah, we can't build them fast enough. Now we're having to convert them into textile factories and uh, decommissioned aircraft carriers. <laughs> you chose this facility? I did. Most people take the small facility that they're assigned. I had a relative nearby. Uh-huh. Well, visiting hours are from 1 to 2. That would be visiting hours. Excuse me? 1 to 2, that's just one hour. Singular? I see here that your profession is listed as... Actor. Yes. I think you'll want to get to know Mr. Carmichael here during chat time. I did stage mostly, but I also Kevin, did... report to the new nurse's station for new admit. Kevin to the nurse's station. You'll be in room 12, bed 4, with Mr. Conklin, Bickford, and Zolkowski. Lights go out at strictly 9 p.m. Lights come back on at 6 a.m. The lounge here goes dark at 5. Any income, no matter how small, including pensions, investments, inheritance, gifts of cash or check, and items that can be sold at federal auction, will be routed through our accounting office. The government reserves the right at time of death to salvage any recyclables, including gold, titanium, and of course your internal organs. All food or beverage from the outside are considered strictly contraband. You shall be responsible for your own toiletries, including but not limited to toothpaste, shampoo, soap, toilet paper, diapers, catheters, colostomy bags, artificial tears, artificial saliva, and of course, anal unguents. If you need clarification, the details of the newly enacted Senior Provision Act, or SPA, are located in the binder in the lounge area. I trust you don't have any questions. A colostomy bag is considered a toiletry? It is under the Senior Provision Act. Seems a little severe. Why don't you take that up with President Cheney? Dick Cheney? I thought he died. He did. We brought him back. <laughs> I'm going on break. See that this gentleman gets settled in. Where is my sweater? Kevin, is Vincent Kramer wearing my sweater again? Uh, maybe. Get it back. Yes, sir. Mom, ma'am. I don't want Mitzi assisting you with rounds anymore. Is that understood? Yes. Kevin, if this job is too much for you, we can always ship you back. No, 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 no. I can do it. Stick to Ronald Reagan movies for Channel 21. Ronald Reagan, great. Hey, what about offering a festival of classic automobile films starring iconic babes from the past? How about no? Doritos were found in room 12. Find the breach. Welcome to spa facility number 273, Mr. Taylor. Boy, she's something. Okay, Gramps, here's the deal. Conklin is pretty much with it, so don't piss him off. Which means hands off his toupee and his moon rock collection. Bigford will eat anything, and I mean anything. 
I also like to talk, so if you're not into constitutional law, do not engage the man. Zolkowski's in a vegetative state, so perfect roommate. Uh, hello, I'm Joe. Judy. Nice to meet you. Good luck. Hi, I'm Joe. Louder. Hi! Who are you? Joe! Wally! Welcome to hell! <laughs> Join us for Ronald Reagan Cinema with this evening's in-house movie. Viva Las Vegas. The buoyant tale of the famed Notre Dame coach starring a totally hot Anne Margaret. Win one for the giver tonight on channel 21, your only channel to cinema classics. And your only channel. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa! <laughs> What's new, Pussycat? Stan! Incoming! You're special to us. Yes, each and every resident here at SDK facility number 273. That's why we're doing everything possible to place you with any living first degree relative. Suddenly remember the name of a long lost family member? Just let us know and we'll ship you, free of charge, into their loving arms. <laughs> Alzheimer's support group meets at 1 p.m. in the North Lounge. Don't forget. <laughs> Coffee tastes different, doesn't it? Oh, yes. What is that I'm tasting? Corn slurry. It's a thickener to prevent choking. Uh. You get used to it. It's amazing what you can get used to. Oh, excuse me. Banyan, your cat? Oh, no, no, no. He's not my cat. He's everybody's cat. <laughs> yeah, but lately he's been hiding because he got in trouble with you-know-who for marking his territory. Well, they'll do that sometimes. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they do. Especially uh, uh, even when they've had their balls cut off. <laughs> you know, the male of the species, balls are no balls they love to mark. <laughs> Back to work. I'm sorry, I forgot your case history. Oh, well, short version is I was mugged, okay. fought back, fell, broke my hip. Oh. Surgery, infection, allergic reaction to the wrong medication, mm -hmm. off to the ICU, drug resistant pneumonia, back to the ICU, then here. My condo was auctioned off to pay the bill. Boy, the Old Testament's got nothing on you. So, uh, what's your story? Huh? Oh, I've always been a nurse. Oh, uh, no, I mean, how'd you get here? Oh, uh, well, the gas pedal kept sticking, you know, uh, and I uh, drove right into a Starbucks. <laughs> Is that when I hit my head? Hmm. Anyway, after that raccoon infestation, electrical fire, oh, and P.S., those were not my cookies. And voila! Uh, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin dear. I'm sorry, I'm late for rounds. No. Miss, we can't help anymore. Well, why not? Because you're a resident. But I'm one of the best nurses you have. Princess, you're great, believe me, but you know who says no. Oh, Kevin. You don't want to get me in trouble, do you? No. But what am I gonna do all day? Watch TV. There's only one channel. Wait a sec. What? Is that yours? Uh-huh. Shit, Mitz! 
Swap. You gotta stop taking Claudia's sweater. It's mine. No, yours has an M written in Sharpie on the tag. See, this is yours. Resident altercation room 12. Repeat, altercation room 12. Shit. Kevin. Bigford, leave his moon rocks alone. Kevin. Kevin, please don't believe me if I do it. He's okay. Do you want to be sent to the first floor? Well, I wouldn't know. Of course not. Okay, then. Uh, but, but, but maybe I could uh, just, you know, check the vegetables uh, for their Kevin, bed sores. Don't ever call them that. Well, why not? That's what you call them. Sweet mother of mercy. Kevin. Oh, Kevin, Kevin, please, Kevin, please, me. please, Kevin, they're my little cabbages. Hi, right, Wally. Wally, what? How are you? I'm losing my mind. I have no means by which to take my own life. That's how I am. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, uh, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, please. It seems like such a waste to me not to... Hey, hey, hey. I think I might have seen a letter on your bed. Huh? For, from Larry? Maybe. Oh. Uh, Kevin, uh, just, uh, excuse me, Kevin. It's quiet time, Gramps. It'll only take a second. Bad morning. Conklin's got the squirts. Uh, Kevin! What? Is there anything we could do about Wally's hearing aid? No, Myrtle's ears were cooked. Sorry. He said it used to work. Yeah, then nothing. Well, maybe I could try. Look, buddy, you're new, right? What's your name? Joe Taylor. Listen, Joe, like we tell families of the deceased, Joe Taylor. Wait a sec, are you an actor? Stage mostly, but I also... Oh like... my God, you're Lash McGear. <laughs> Different Joe Taylor. Joe Taylor starred Destination yesterday. No, that, that wasn't me. No, it's you. You look like him. I know. Oh, there's some slight resemblance, but I'm, I'm not him. <laughs> yes, you are. Oh, man, I love that show. It's a very common name. They had a marathon last weekend on Sci-Fi. One with Ann Margaret. Oh, my freaking God. Older? Yeah. Still juicy? <laughs> Hell yeah. I was a stage actor. I watched all 36 episodes with only two pee breaks, which is a personal best for me. Travel with Lash McGear as the hands of the clock go back, and a third-rate thug gets a second chance to be a first-class citizen. Hey, you know, I googled you and there was like, nothing. What happened, man? Where'd you go? I didn't go anywhere. Was it a woman? It was, wasn't it? Are you in hiding? Hey, I get it. Sometimes a man's just gotta go. Was it a woman? Because it's either a woman, drugs, or your mom. With me, it was all of them, so I totally get it. <laughs> I'm in the business myself. You're an actor? Actor, director, writer, all-around reconnaissance man. Renaissance. Yeah, my buddies and me just made the deadline for the under-10 iPhone movie contest. What is that? Congratulations. What is it? Thanks. It's movies under 10 seconds made for cell phone viewing at red lights. You know how there's always the best part of the movie, like the car chase or the sex scene. We make just that part the whole movie. Like previews. Uh, only way shorter. But there is a narrative arc. I don't care what anyone says. Story is king. Judy, guess who this is? Lindbergh's baby. <laughs> don't know who that is. Try again. I have no idea. From TV. I don't watch TV. From a long time ago TV. I, I didn't watch it then either. It's Joe Taylor, star of Destination yesterday. I'm not him. He's in hiding. No <laughs> one will ever find you here. I gotta <laughs> tell Coughlin. He'll be himself. Love the makeup, Judy. Thank you. Nora did it. Lash me again. I'm not him. I am an actor, though. Nothing big. No movies. Mostly stage. Shakespeare? Why, my good lady Disdain, are you still living? Is it possible Disdain should die when she had such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Uh, Shaw. If I come to visit you on your salvation shelter, Will you come the day after to see me in my cannon works? Take care. 
it may end in you giving up the cannon for the sake of the Salvation Army. Are you sure it will not give, end in your giving up the Salvation Army for the sake of the cannons? <laughs> I flubbed my line. No, it was me. <laughs> Were you an actor? I was a teacher, theater arts, and international politics. Complimentary subject. <laughs> uh, you're uh, a little bit... Uh, Nothing! Oh. Is it 
beautiful as the sound of the human voice. Wally! to shut you up. What does that mean? Oh, when Wally could hear, he'd go at Claudia 20, 30 minutes at a time. I had every right. Well, nobody's disputing you had a case, Wally. Oh, lights on at 6 a.m., no alcohol, no junk food. I didn't get up at 6 a.m. when I was a baby. <laughs> and she was worse. Agitator. She gave up. We've seen what happens to troublemakers. Uh, what happens? They disappear. It's your opinion. Wally, you've got to promise to lay off. This here is America, sister. I call it like I see it. You'll call yourself right down to the first floor. Uh, what's on the first floor? The psych unit. Oh, well, they do an evaluation and send you back. <laughs> Nobody comes back from the first floor. It's called the Twilight Ward. Everyone is sedated. They wrap you in a kind of a heated hot dog bun, and then you're slowly rotated. <laughs> I bet you're on that waiting list. Let her try. No. No, the spa rules clearly state a resident must pose a danger to spa property or another human being, in that order. I don't care, I'm gonna get her back. I can feel my fingers around her neck right now. Uh, Wally, Wally, I'd play this a little differently if I were you. Meaning? You're in the catbird seat now. How? She doesn't know, you know? Oh. You can use that to your advantage. Where do you keep your hearing aid at night? On the nightstand. Uh, not anymore, you don't. <laughs> Oh, that might be her mitzi sweater. Okay, okay. Here, batteries. Oh, jeez. Come on, Mitzi, hurry. I'm coming, I'm coming. Come on, come on. Everybody sleep. Everything all right in here? Uh, fine. Just fine. <laughs> Wally, shut your broom hole. I was sleeping. Uh, I forgot the great actor can convince anyone of anything. That's right, baby. If she suspects for one minute that she you're won't. Back... You know, I thought your sleeping was very authentic, Wally. Thank you very much, Mitzi. Uh, the snorting, not quite right, though, you know? <laughs> Lord help us. <laughs> Wally, what kind of acting did you do? Well, I did all kinds. I did uh, commercials, dinner theater, and stock. All professional contracts. I could have been on Broadway had my talent been recognized. Judy, any theater? As a matter of fact, yes. Oh, uh, ushering doesn't count. Acting, community theater. Well, you know, there's some wonderful amateur stuff out there. Oh. I'm glad to hear finally somebody admit that. At what place? Oh, Noises Off, Steel Magnolias, Glengarry Glen Ross. What the hell? Oh, there's frightening language in that play. And it was a gender-blind production. No. That is just wrong. I don't think so. We extend it. If you want to tap into Ricky Roma's rage, find a post-menopausal woman. <laughs> you know, we're missing a bet here. You know what we should be doing? No, what should we be doing? Theater. Huh? Oh, great, Judy, let's put on a play. I'm not talking about... Oh, great, Mickey, we can use the barn out back. <laughs> I'm not talking about productions. Well, what are you talking about? Just, you know, reading plays. Out loud? Yes. Huh. For who? For anybody. Well, I've recently been let go, so I'm available. <laughs> Look, buddy. Appreciate what you did with the hearing aid and all, but this project ain't gonna work. Tell him. Listen, Joe. Tell him. I'm trying. You're overestimating our available talent pool we have here. Remember Helen Dingle's book club? He's new. An unmitigated disaster. I bet we could do it. Mm -mm. No, we tried. People forgot when we were meeting, they lost their books, 
and they got in sick. I'll need your help. Joe, you don't understand. These people are... Uh, Defective. That's why I'll need help. Joe. Just one reading, that's all. Joe. Judy, he needs you. Judy, he needs you. <laughs> Judy, he needs you. What the hell? Oh, oh, I need you. Okay. <laughs> One, one Hindenburg reading, then you apologize and you forget this even happened. Deal, sucker. You got any better ideas? Yes, Something I'm... better to do? Yes, empty my mouth. Oh. Uh, Wally, wait. Let him go. And Wally, think of this. You'll get to read all those great roles you were denied because some idiot director didn't recognize your extraordinary talent. Such as? Uh, Big Daddy, uh, Stanley Kowalski. Caligula. Hamlet? Oh, dear God, Hamlet. <laughs> uh, yes, you're a natural. So you're talking like a uh, stage reading. Exactly. Well, who's going to be our audience? Anybody who can walk, wheel, or crawl out of their rooms to be entertained for a couple of hours. Come on, Wally, what do you say? Helen would do it. She would. Oh, uh, what the hell? <laughs> Boy, all right. Yay, Wally. <laughs> we'll need more readers. Oh, yeah. Well, I can get help of White and Melick. They owe me. Oh. Well, maybe Nora could do the makeup. Make her feel part of it. Well, my roommate's in a coma, but I'll ask her. Well, who's going to direct? Direct what? Oh. Uh, traffic! Nice save, nutcake. <laughs> Come on, spill it, geezers. What's up? Flash? Can we trust you, Kevin? Maybe. There's a ringing endorsement. We want to do a stage reading here. Newsflash, she won't like that. We may need you to smooth the way a little. <laughs> you think? One condition. What? You get my phone movie to somebody in the industry. Okay. Ah, let me hear you say it. You know. Travel back with me, time with me, Lash McGear. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Another thing. Hey, you said one condition. Don't get your diaper in a twist, Myrtle. Uh, hey, you can hear. Oh, whoops. She's not going to like that either. Uh, what else? I want to film it. Listen, kid. So I'll have to have some input. Okay. What? What? We need him. That's right. I mean, come on. Just logistics and shit. Getting around Hal, the night nurse. Mr. Hello. No, Mr. Robot. Oh, everything by the book, huh? No, he's a real robot. Yes. Hal is short for Halliburton after hours life support. You've seen him. Meet me. Oh. His head's the camera. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Do you have any theater experience? Oh, for Pete's sake. I mean, does he understand pace, transition, objective? <laughs> of course he doesn't. He was born two weeks ago. You want those Twinkies? Uh, his movie was just entered in the, uh... Under 10 iPhone Movie Contest. Yay! <laughs> this would be for the documentary category. The prize is double for stories about old people and cripple types. And you guys are both! <laughs> what is today? Wednesday. By Friday, you'll be old and crippled. <laughs> Present altercation, room 12. Repeat, altercation, room 12. Sweet mother Bigford, don't eat Coughlin's toupee. <laughs> well? Well, let's get this disaster started. Okay. Right. How about we list a few titles? All right, I'll be the secretary. Okay. Uh, Wally, Ready. Wally, you want to start us off? Sure. Death of a salesman. <laughs> what? <laughs> The story of a lousy father and an even worse husband. The guy's a liar, a cheater, and worst of all, a total bore. Oh, attention must be paid. Why? The guy's a grade eight jerk. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, you slow down. You're going too fast. Uh, just the titles. Oh, okay. So what play would Miss Sarah Bernhardt like to do? Oh, something classic. Good roles for everyone. Head a gabbler. <laughs> the story of an idle whore masquerading as a housewife. 
She burns the Bayes manuscript, wants the pretty girl's hair. When the going gets rough, spoiler alert, she whacks herself. All right. Well, if we want to challenge ourselves, how about a new classic? Like what? I don't know. Um, Tony Kushner. Why do you hate your audience? <laughs> hey, could we do a play by an unknown writer? Sure. Because I have a script that envisions a meeting between Florence Nightingale and Clara Barton. It's called Make Way for Nurses. <laughs> Write it down. What about King Lear? You really got a thing for lousy fathers, don't you? <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Spoon River and Ballad. Oh, good one. Graveside monologue. Larry did that when he was in high school. Yes, he played Tom Merritt, who was um, who was murdered by his wife's teenage lover. I don't know. A bunch of dead people sitting around talking. Well, don't you like to be typecast? Victor's <laughs> <laughs> hey, going eight shit. She's coming back to sedate him. That will be tonight after dinner. Where? Here. They kill the lights at five. Okay, the diaper closet at six o'clock p.m. Okay, tell your roommates. Everybody sleep. Help! He's biting my leg! <laughs> Blaming your obesity on hypothyroidism? Think again. The vast majority of obese Americans simply consume too many calories, period. So why not take the day off from lying to yourself and join us for our morning exercise program, Robot Aerobics, with Hal the Night Nurse. Meet me every morning at 5 a.m. on channel 21, your only channel. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is better in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take up arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. You are like a pink rose, cousin Cecily. I don't think it can be right for you to talk to me like that. Miss Prism never says such things to me. Then Miss Prism is a short-sighted old lady. You are the prettiest girl I ever saw. Miss <laughs> Prism says that all good looks are a snare. They're a snare every sensible man would like to be caught in. Oh, I don't think I would like to catch a sensible man. I shouldn't know what to talk to him about. I don't care that for your bullying and your big talk. Henry Higgins, I'll advertise it in the paper that your duchess is a flower girl that you taught. And she'll teach anybody else to be a duchess just the same in six months for a thousand guineas. Just a friendly reminder, any illness related to obesity or lifestyle choices will not be covered by spa. You cause it, you paid for it, so get on board the health wagon today, or better yet, run alongside it. <laughs> you read beautifully last night, Mitz. <laughs> Thank you. People have been complimenting me all day. You were pretty good yourself. <laughs> Yay, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. You know, L Larry's coming to take me to dinner tonight. You know, he did a lot of plays when he was in school. <laughs> they, they said his Thomas Edison was incandescent. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he'd come home and ramble on and on about everything, and <laughs> now I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> it goes by quickly, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. One minute, you, you, you're holding a tiny little hand, and, and the next minute, hmm? Oh, um, Mr. Conklin sent me a note. May, may I read it to you? Oh, please. Your performance in Pygmalion was over the moon. I will be brief. You have stolen my heart. <laughs> he has very good taste. Oh, thank you. 
Oh, do, do you think that I could read Hortense Robin, you know, in Spoon River Anthology? She's the one that... Who takes the cure in Baden Baden. That's right. Sure. You know, you don't have to give Wally all the big parts. I know. Where is everybody? Oh, Wally didn't sleep very well last night. And he was calling out for his son and, and, and then for his girlfriend. Oh, who's that? Helen Dingle. Lovely woman. <laughs> She had the most giant charm bracelet. I mean, it must have had 20 charms on it. <laughs> and, oh my God, it was as long as a tambourine whenever it shook. <laughs> and she had a trimmer. <laughs> she used to drive you know who crazy. <laughs> uh, what happened to Helen? I don't know. She just disappeared. Never tell you anything. Oh, but Helen, oh, oh she was terrific. <laughs> what spunk? <laughs> she threatened to call the 800 number. <laughs> wow, he was just nuts about her. You know, he's just an old bush pot underneath it all. Oh, sorry, Nora insisted oh, on no. doing my oh. makeup again, then I had to secretly wipe it off. I know, no, uh, no, you're. You I, I, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I, I, um, Here? Your eyebrow. No, no, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. That's it. You got it. Okay. No. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yourself, Mitz. Really? Yes, you could have picked up your cues, but by and large, not bad. Are we ready to get started? Are we going to wait for the others? Oh, there are no others. Hempelwhite had projectile diarrhea. Oh, good. Oh. Malik slipped in the splatter and broke his hip. Oh. Well, Bigfoot's out. He mistook Compton's toupee for a coffee cake. <laughs> and Nora's vertigo is back again. Yeah. Well, let's start. It's okay. good reading last night. Oh, thanks. Wally, you were on fire. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you, Colonel Pickering. Huge audience. Must have been 10, 12 people. Yes. Yeah, you know, the diaper closet can no longer accommodate wheelchairs. It's too tight. Those people will have to walk or they're out. We can't discriminate like that. No. But they're dragging us down. You were in a wheelchair when you first got here. You were, Wally. Henry Higgins uses his hands, and I couldn't gesture. I kept hitting people. And by the way, I have a feeling someone was administering CPR during my final scene in Act 5. Well, that was very distracting. <laughs> and this, write down, consider venue change. Okay. All right. After our reading, we voted to go ahead on our group-generated Christmas play. It's sort of a fractured nativity tale for the grandkids. Huh. Short and fun. A variety show with singing and dancing. <laughs> Earth the Fruit Loop, what planet are you from? Wally. Uh, we talked about something a little less strenuous, remember? Oh, <laughs> right. We'll perform it on Saturday the 10th during chat time. Kevin's rounding up some chairs. Now, if we put our audience here, we should be able to pack in quite a few more people. I already called Larry. Yeah, Tony's bringing the boys. Oh, I love it. You know, I think I'd like to play Mary Magdalene. I think she's been very misunderstood. Well, writing our script ourselves will, will allow us to tailor the role to our own residence. Oh, well, that's great, because I have a roommate who'd like to participate, but she has special needs. Your roommate is in a coma. <laughs> That's the special need. Oh, Lord, help me figure these people out. Here. And what's this? You, last night you told us to write down some scenes, so I wrote down some scenes. Well, that was quick. <laughs> it was very exciting. <laughs> wow, looks like we were all busy last night. Oh, yeah. I can't remember the last time I had a flashlight under the covers. How about your wedding night? <laughs> Nice one, Beatrice. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Look, I, I, could we read my script? Kevin made copies. Well, sure. Oh, nice big font. Oh. What, what is this, 18? 22. Oh, <laughs> Now, in, in this scene, Joe, uh, you're going to play Joseph, <laughs> you know, who is uh, Mary's husband. 
and uh, Judy, you're going to play Mary, the mother of God. <laughs> uh, hello. Oh, I thought you could play Jesus. Oh, that sounds fine. I bet it does. Okay, now, in this scene, Mary and Joseph have just come home from their very first date. Now, that they're sitting next to each other on a bench. <laughs> okay. All right, there you go. Okay, now you, you two have to scoot a little closer. All right, that's it. All right. Uh, yep, yeah, hold hands. Okay, nice. All right. Okay, go ahead. You know how much I love being a carpenter. Yes. But you are so pretty. I wish I could make my living just looking at you. Stop. I'm blushing. Uh, it, it says here, uh... That's right, go ahead. Okay with you? Sure. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be like it never even happened at all, okay? No, not okay. You see that sign, old man? It says maximum occupancy 12, and that's the fire marshal talking, not me. Well, just this once, for our grandkids, we'd be very careful. Mitzi, you don't have any grandkids, do you? Not yet. And you're not likely to, are you? Please. No. And why is that, Mitzi? Don't. Because your only son, Larry, died five years ago. Isn't that right? <laughs> that wasn't necessary. In the past, we confabulated with residents. Oh, yes. Your dead wife will be along any minute now. I know what the word means. <laughs> Current protocol is to tell the truth. Mr. Carmichael here likes to talk all about his son, Tony, and how caring and solicitous he is. A son who's visited his father once the entire time he's been here. I occasionally remind him of that fact so he doesn't get his hopes up. And Beatrice, she was planning a trip in the spring to visit her nephew when I stopped her and reminded her what her doctor told her in this very room. That she would in all likelihood be dead by Shut then. Shut up! Holly, no! Oh, I missed her Carmichael. What big You're not a nurse. You're a malignant tumor that has metastasized to every corner of every room on this floor. I don't know what's wrong with you. Maybe you were dropped at birth. <laughs> Maybe you're mad because you're not pretty. I don't know and I don't care, but you remove all signs of hope and I'll be damned if I'm gonna let you get away with it. You can't do that. Sit down, Mr. Taylor. You can't do that. I said sit down. I believe you're the cause of all this mischief. Why are you even here? Kevin reports oh. to the nurse's station with wheelchair. Kevin to the nurse's station. If you had the guts, Mr. Taylor, you'd see that I'm not the bad guy here. Well, who is? <laughs> Mr. Carmichael has diabetes, prostate cancer, and cirrhosis of the liver because he's a glutton, a smoker, and a drunk. 
three of the residents are in vegetative states because they couldn't be bothered to buckle a seatbelt. Over half of the residents are here because they wanted to live their lives saying, if I want to sit on a couch and eat cheeseburgers and die young, that's my whole damn business. But they don't die young, they linger for years. And underpaid schlubs like me get to wipe their butts, clean their catheters, and listen to the same stories day in and day out. But do you think anyone's gonna be there for me when I break down? Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Carmichael here and his drunken, sedentary cronies believe the government dry with their chronic and preventable illnesses. But I don't dare suggest that they reevaluate their lifestyle choices. <laughs> no, can't do that. Because then they bring up freedom and the founding fathers and the Alamo and God knows what else. Because you can't tell an American anything if it's going to interfere with him doing whatever the hell he wants to do, whenever the hell he wants to do it. So you tell me, Mr. Taylor, who's the bad guy here. <sighs> Take him to his room. Let's go, Myrtle. Upsy daisy. Clear the lounge. Party's over, everybody. Chop, chop. I mean it! Move! Wait. Take him. Get up. What's the harm? It agitates the residents and sets a precedent for other arbitrary events. Allowing the rules to be eaten away by small encroachments is precisely why our country is the way it is today. What's most appalling is that you're not even a good nurse. <laughs> Don't bother. I've heard it. Nurse Claudius Hannigan Ratched. I save my sympathy for the poor bastards with Huntington's and cystic fibrosis, not for those who ate and drank their way to a slow death. What you don't understand is that you're dealing with human beings. These are people who have lost loved ones and are doing their best to stay on speaking terms with the world. Your message is valid, but it's one nurse to another. Bedside manners have the cure. Emily Dickinson said, tell the truth, but tell it slant. <laughs> you don't get it, do you? We did slant. Pretty please eat a vegetable and walk a lousy 30 minutes a day. Didn't work. Now get up. I need to make a call. First floor. You know, Wally isn't the one you should be worrying about. I mean, who do you think gave him that book on lip reading? Me. And that uh, Christmas play? My idea. And that vomit in your brand new purse? <laughs> I was the one that let Mr. O'Bannon into the employee break room. And now look what I've done. I've urinated all over your special chair. <laughs> and on purpose, too. Well, that's violation of spa property, so I guess that moves me to the top of the list. Oh, I underestimated you, Mitzi. That's all right, Claudia. I'm used to it. Wait,
time for the next available sleep and sweet is undetermined. Oh. I'm sorry. I think you said please reserve. Is that correct? Yes. Now, say the name of our future guest. Remember, you can only reserve one suite on the waiting list at a time. I'm sorry, I missed that. The name of our future guest is... Mitzi Kramer. Your order has been successfully placed. Thank you for calling the Twilight Ward. Pleasant dreams. Chat time is now ending. Welcome to quiet time. child getting married congratulations please pass along as our free gift a copy of self eugenics should you be reproducing family history riddled with mental illness and low iqs do we really need another cousin timmy counting on his fingers and eating dirt remind the happy couple to watch for the vasectomy van in their neighborhood friendly reminder genetic profile Ten-year-old med student walks in and says, Mr. Carmichael, it's your lucky day. No more pee bag. Well, he then proceeded to pull the catheter out of my urethra like he was starting an outboard motor. Oh. Why are you smiling at me like that? I've got a surprise for you. What's that? Read this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there is a gun. Oh, I better remember not to do that. How'd you get this past her? Well, Kevin brings up the mail. Oh, boy, oh, boy. We're back where we want to be. I can't wait to see her face when she sees this. Oh, no, no. We only use this if we need to. That way she has no response time. Yes, that's a great idea. Can I keep it just to sustain my will to live? Guard it with your life. Oh, uh, hey. Hey. Gentlemen, the iPhone 13. That's <laughs> sweet. Clipped it. Borrowed it from a mom. Okay, so here's the deal. We'll do a little Q&A, you know, like, what is it like to be old? Got a tearjerker story? Haul it out, but keep it short. Sound good? Yeah, sure. <laughs> And action. Joe, did you ever sleep with Anne Margaret? No. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Wally, did that pee bag on your leg drive you bonkers? What? He gets Anne Margaret? I got a question about my pee bag? <laughs> Fine. Did you ever sleep with Anne Margaret? What? No. <laughs> but I thought about it. <laughs> well, who did? Joe actually had a shot at knowing the lady. You did? He slashed my gear. Kevin is confused. Oh, he's off his nut by a mile. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. What's the best part about getting old? You don't give a shit what people think. <laughs> cool. I thought this movie had to be under 60 seconds. <laughs>
director's cut. Do you ever think about sex? What kind of question is that? <laughs> An interesting kind. I think about sex, you know, like half the day. Oh, you liar. You think about sex the whole day. <laughs> Maybe so what? We understand, Kevin. Uh, we used to, too. We're not talking about just being on the prowl, my young friend. Remember, Wally? Remember? I nearly went blind. <laughs> <laughs> it's a matter of lifestyle. When a man just has to express himself, if you know what I mean. Oh, I get it. You're talking about self-noting. And you, my elderly friends, are looking at the king. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be grateful when you hit your 40s, Kevin. Each decade takes a little bit more of the edge off. You, you think about other things. Like what? Like, in your 40s? Career. 50s. Gardening. 60s. Dogs. <laughs> 70s. I don't want to scare the boy. He can't handle the truth. Fine, I'll be surprised. Oh, you'll be surprised, all right. Here we are. Did you start the interview? You're late. Oh, my fault. I had to do rounds. Smiths. Oh, I rotated a few vegetables. Sweet Jesus. All right, all right. Well, we're here. So what are we talking about? Uh. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I've caught enough teenage boys to know what this look means. Mitzi, we just walked in on sex talk. Oh, well, that's nothing to be ashamed of, man. It's perfectly healthy. Do you have any questions for me? <laughs> All right, so, what are we talking about? Subject is not pertinent to women folk. Says who? Well, have you ever gotten up from a meeting at work and gone to the men's room when you didn't really need to use the men's room, but you were just bored and... While you were in there, you suddenly, out of nowhere, started thinking about your nephew's hot girlfriend. No. Well, see. <laughs> I went to the ladies' room. Come here. <laughs> and it was a 22-year-old Argentinian maintenance man. Oh, I was at this teacher's convention, and I looked out the window, and there he was. Shirt off and dig in a trench. Oh, it must have been 95 degrees that day. And sweat just rolled. Okay, stop! <laughs> she got you. Oh, you know, women enjoy sex too, Wally. Right, Mitzi? I like to cuddle. <laughs> I think the subject embarrasses Wally. <laughs> Time out. Let's get back to where we Time for your bills. Shit, it's hell. Meet, He's meet. early. Time for your bills. Quick, everybody. Meet, 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 meet. He's going into number eight. Okay, go, 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 go. Calling all patriots. Want to do something for your country? How about taking responsibility for your health? You'll never eat another hot dog after you see our colon cancer documentary, 12 Angry Polyps. Tonight's Big House Movie on Channel 21, your only channel. And good afternoon, Nurse Claudia. Good afternoon, Mr. Carmichael. Yes, second floor. Yes, Mrs. Malik. No, it's not covered. We've had this conversation, Mrs. Malik. Your husband is dying from a constellation of ailments stemming from his obesity. All he has to do to change his prognosis is lose weight. Yes, your husband does have the right to live any way he chooses, but he does not have the right to expect the taxpayer to pay for those choices. Where the heck do you think the money comes from, Mrs. Malik? No, it comes out of my paycheck. Why should I pay for the consequences of your husband's poor dietary choices? <laughs> oh, really? Would you like to talk about the chocolate fudge cake we found pinned in his sock drawer? <laughs> no, Mrs. Malik. 
predisposition does not mean free pass. It means try harder. Now, I have residents dying of cancer who would love to be told, follow this diet and you'll live. Now, if your husband isn't capable of shutting his mouth to save his hello, Tub room. Victor Denise was bathing him. Were you assisting? No. Kevin, they get one two minute assisted shower per resident per week. Period. Yeah, it's so freaking sad. She has to suds up all those lumps on his chest. Sooner or later, we all sit down to a banquet of consequences. Look at me with those pleading eyes. Kevin, his doctor pleaded with him to quit smoking. His wife pleaded with him. His niece pleaded with him. His response? Mind your own damn business. And that would be my response to you, Kevin. I know, but he seems really confused. <sighs> Kevin, it's disingenuous to dig your own grave, jump in, and then ask, how did I get here? What do you think that is? Uh, uh, don't know. Does it look like a wheel of walker? Nah. Really? Right there. What is that? A uh, reflection from the window, a Doug's Donuts, the neon sign. I gotta finish charting. Kevin. Yeah. Program how to shoot every two hours. The residents complain now he's waking them up. Every two hours, including common areas and storage. You mean like even the diaper closet? I mean like even the diaper closet. Yeah, okay. And Kevin? Yeah? Stick to the spa approved list of movies for Channel 21. That's a lot of Ronald Reagan. I was just trying to kick it up a notch. Don't. The titles of the movies don't match the descriptions, and it's very confusing for the residents. That's totally my bad. I programmed it wrong. I can fix Stick it. Stick to the list, Kevin. Right. Where has Mr. Carmichael been getting his Twinkies? Um, I don't know. Uh, Maybe Coughlin's buddy or uh, Malik's family. They bring in crap. I'll look into it. Do that. Mr. Carmichael sure has settled down, though, don't you think? Yes, he has. I had a talk with him. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? I told him to, you know, settle down. <laughs> really? And you don't think that perhaps the threat of being transferred downstairs might account for that change? No, nah, it was me. You certainly don't lack for confidence, do you, Kevin? Why would I? So, uh, maybe... Yeah, yeah, I'll put in a your evaluation. Sweet. Stan sent the wrong med packs again. Stan's always mixing that stuff up. He Change may look stressing. Got it covered. No need to worry when Kevin's on board. I'll hold down the fort. Kevin! What? Diaper closet! Sorry. Wet care, room 10. Don't pick at it, Malik! What? Good afternoon, Nurse Claudia. I was just being friendly. You were pushing it. No. She's right. Don't provoke her. Oh, it won't matter. We've got her right where we want her. We have this. Put that away. Hand it over. Can I please keep it? It's the only thing keeping me alive. All right. Notes from last night. She's coming back. We have five more minutes. <sighs> Mitch? Yes? I want out of the manger scene. But you said you'd play Jesus. Jesus the man, yeah. Love the magic. Healing that leper guy, terrific shit. But Jesus the newborn? <laughs> no! Wally. I'm too big. It doesn't make sense. Well, it does. You're a giant baby. Your birth weight correlates to your impact on the world. And everybody loved it at the run through. Are you kidding? Kevin couldn't stop laughing. Well, it's too late to recast. Well, we can use Mitzi's roommate. She's already shrunken and in a coma. <laughs> oh, no. She's already got enough to do playing Lazarus. Well, that's the other thing. Lazarus is dead. And he's brought back to life. And your roommate's 
really got the first part down pat. <laughs> no, I have got that all figured out. Now, Mitzi and I, Mitzi, Mitzi and I are going to get down behind her. We're going to crouch down, oh, okay. and when you order her to rise, we're going to slowly push her up <laughs> and back out. <laughs> Wait, how am I going to do that if I'm the narrator? We have another problem we need to address. I better take notes. Heffelwhite is out as wise man. He was uh, transported to the hospital this morning. What happened? He had a bowel movement. So? After three weeks of not having one. Ooh, there she blows! Uh, so now we don't have a wise man. Oh, well, Kevin could play the wise man. Well, he's filming. Well, maybe he could do both. What about how? How the night nurse? He's a robot. Exactly. The wise men were from out of town, so they'd have accents. Oh, sweet <laughs> mother of mercy. Well, you know, Nora feels very strongly Look, that your she... roommate is blind. There's no part for her. Well, she knows that. She wants to do the makeup. Tell her yes. What? Thank you. <laughs> and I have a suggestion. I think we ought to cut some of Jesus' miracles. Oh, okay. What? Are you nuts? The, story, the kids love that crap. The story is about Jesus' birth, not a compilation of his greatest hits. She's right, Wally. The show is running long. I mean, I'm willing to cut my scene. Well, let's take a look at that tonight. <laughs> okay. Well, another thing. Conklin is running out of breath before the end of his line. He has emphysema. Well, tell him to turn his oxygen up. It's up as high as it can go. Well, get him another tank and shove another tube up his nose. All right, I'll look into it. All right, moving along. Reminder, do not discuss any of this when Nurse Claudia is on duty. Uh, well, you know, she doesn't know the date of it, so and she's not about to come in on her day off. Oh, uh, that reminds me, I might need an understudy. What? What's the matter, Mitzi? Don't you feel well? We all get nervous, Miss. Stage fright comes with the territory, sweetheart. You'll get used to it. All common areas are now closed. Please return to your room to receive your dinner tray. You're going to be terrific, Mitzi. I, I know oh, it. She's right. Nothing to be afraid of. You'll be just fine. Hey, Joe, what was that noise during my Bethlehem scene? Oh, it's Kevin. He's making the sound of the camels. Why? For ambience. I like it. Jesus. Good evening, Nurse Claudia. Tonight's dinner is tuna fish puree and red, white, and blue gelatin cubes topped with a high fiber black bean ganache. Beverage, decaf coffee thickened with the kiss of corn. Enjoy. Therefore, it is my pleasure to inform you that on the afternoon of December 10th, may exceed the maximum occupancy of the Southwest Coleman Room second floor spa facility number 273. Merry Christmas, Frank Martell City Fire Marshal. Oh, shit! <laughs> oh, no, 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 Oh. Sorry, ma'am. This lounge area is closed. I was just polishing my epitaph. Judy. Uh, spoon rip. Oh. <laughs> Who's the lucky citizen? Oh, one Eugenia Todd. I like her. And who are you reading? Lyman King. He has this wonderful little prophecy. It, it's chilling. It, it's quite ch startling, but at the same time, chillingly obvious. Oh, I'll have to go back and read that one. I didn't know you were a night owl. I'm not. I how come? Uh, nothing really. What? Uh, it's embarrassing. What? Tomorrow. 
tomorrow. You're not nervous. Not the woman who played Ricky Roma. I can know it's silly. No, it's not. I'm nervous too. Really? Well, it's just a little holiday skit, right? Exactly. <laughs> For a handful of people. Yeah. Oh, so why am I so nauseous then? Morning sickness? <laughs> Wally, Wally, on the other hand. Now he's in his element. Oh, he's a new man, thanks to you. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and I could kill you for it. <laughs> you know, I was wondering, why haven't they shipped Wally off to live with his son? Oh, there's a square footage rule. Tony lives in a rented room with his kids. Ah, uh, uh. So, how'd you get here, Judy? Hmm. Well, you know, my friend, Helen Dingle, used to say, she chose the wrong parents. I, on the other hand, used to smoke. And I never would take a flight of stairs if I could help it. My four food groups were cheese, sugar, scotch, and cured meats. <laughs> Don't tell Claudia this, but I'm afraid she's barking up the right tree. Maybe, but what a bark. Uh, my turn, Joe. Were you married? Yes, Elizabeth. 15 years. You never remarried? No, no one turned my head that way. You? <laughs> yes, George. It, it didn't last long. Why not? I don't really think George liked women. Oh, well, that could be a problem. It was. <laughs> no kids? Oh, do you have anyone coming to the show? No, my sister's gone. You? Yes, my nephew's oh, coming. Good. Oh, he's 19. You know, a few years ago, we had some bumpy times. You know, typical stuff. The young don't understand the old, and the old can't remember what it's like to be young. <laughs> I don't know how the generations communicate at all. Oh, me neither. What do you say to a teenage boy that's going to make any sense to him? <laughs> Dinner's ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Would it help to run lines? Would you mind? You know how much I love being a carpenter. Yes. But you are so pretty. I wish I could make my living just looking at you. Thanks. Oh, I'm blushing. <laughs> Hello? Hi. The script just says one kiss. Then I shouldn't kiss you again? No, that would be very bad. only right for me to tell you I'm living on borrowed time. Aren't we all? No, silly. Last night I was visited by an angel who told me I was to be the mother of God. What did you have for dinner? <clears throat> and so, Joseph went to his parents with the happy news of his betrothal. Mom, Dad, I met a girl. There, there is, is a, a girl. God. <laughs> Name? Mary. How old? Fourteen. A little long in the tooth, son. We'll take it, we'll take it. <laughs> and she's pregnant. Oh, just kill me now! Are you trying to kill your 
mother. Oh, it's not mine. I never touched her. Oh, that's good. Stick with that. You never touched her. An angel told her she was to be the mother of God. Oh, wait, wait, way too much. Just keep it simple. You never touched her. <laughs> and then an angel came to me oh, and said, He's been huffing that shellac again. No, no, you don't get it. Oh, we get it all right. Yeah, you want to see angels? I'll show you angels. Oh, Ma, cut it out. <laughs> to travel a great distance until they were near exhaustion. Well, good evening and welcome to the Bethlehem Desert Inn. My name is Murray. How can I help you? Uh, we'd like a room for the night. Oh, you're kidding, right? No. no. You see that crush of camels out back? <sighs> yes? yes? We're booked solid. But my wife is with child. Oh, I can see that, or somebody needs to lay off the rugula. Oh, sorry, mazel tov. Oh, anything, anything. Oh, oh, oh please. Oh, yes. I'd like to help you, but there ain't no room in the inn for stay. Listen, mister. No, don't give me the stink eye. Give it to Caesar Augustus, Mr. Fancy Pants. I want a census. Everybody go back to your hometown. Ah! There's a stable out back. It ain't much, but you're welcome to it. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank young you. people today, I give balls. <laughs> Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the days of Herod the king. <laughs> he sure is a healthy baby. <laughs> yes. Just listen to that cry. Just listen to that cry. I don't know, but I'm doing it. This 
This one's for you, Lash. <laughs> no! No, this man is not your friend, Kevin! Yes, he is. He's getting me into the movie business. He's a liar! He's not Joe Taylor, the TV star. That Joe Taylor died! He's a fraud! Go on and ask him, Kevin! You're not him? Tell the truth! I told you I wasn't. But you said travel back in time with me, Lash McGear. I know. I shouldn't have said that, but we needed your help. Kevin, come on. Have I ever lied to you? Come on, Kevin. Give no. me the gun. No! Oh, the baby Jesus could no longer remain quiet! <laughs> Son, there's a moment in every man's life that defines him. This one is yours. And you stole my hearing aid batteries. To maintain tranquility. Now, Kevin, come on, think about this. Think. Willful insubordination, assault, those show up on your evaluation and your parole is revoked. Parole? Yeah. You've got a lot to lose, young man. I don't. <laughs> oh, oh, on your knees. Oh, hear the angel's voice. Yes, all right. Give all I know, night. Nice one. Oh, and there is a good chair. I got a leg. Joe, say something. Well, that's our show, kids. <laughs> Tony's here. Go, Wally. Okay, Tony, I'll meet you. Wasn't that lady who came on at the end scary? Ooh, she sure scared Joseph. I love you, Grandpa. <laughs> I'm not your grandpa, sweetie, but thank you. I love you, too. And now, we have cookies and prune juice for everyone. Let's play. <laughs> Chat Tommy and Dean, welcome to Quiet Time. Sweet freaking Jesus, now what? How long does that stuff last? Hours. Oh man, I'm cooked. You didn't do it, I did. Oh, she's not going to remember who did it. We can tell the authorities anything we want. Uh, uh, look, I'll take the fall, I'll confess. Oh man, Mitch, you're killing me. I'm not going to be here that much longer anyway. Why not? Oh, I'm moving out. Where? Where? Somewhere nearby. Howdy, folks. Hey, Kev. Hey, Stan. Uh, pick up for the Twilight Ward, Mitzi Kramer. Hi, Mitzi Kramer. Okay. <laughs> Why are we laughing? That's Claudia, our nurse. <laughs> Holiday cheer. You gotta pace yourself. <laughs> That's what I told her, but you know, chicks. Just like my eggs. I'll get these wheels back to you. Okay, here we go, sweetie. Hey, wait just a second. What? I know her. She works here. She thinks she does. Pretends to be a nurse. It must be in your notes. No. Oh, yeah, right here. Claims to be a spa nurse. <laughs> when she sobers up, she's going to tell you she's Claudia. Well, you know, she can tell me anything she wants. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap! I've given her narcotics and shit. What? She's real convincing. Oh, man, if this gets on my eval, they'll pull my parole. <laughs> hey, hey, folks, so why don't we just forget what I just said, huh? Yeah, I don't know. They'll send me back to Pakistan. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Christmas. You are good folks. I owe you one. Okay, here we go. Claudia. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> that was a close one. Like that episode where Lash McGear is. Right, you're not him. Uh.
I'm sorry, Kevin. When you thought I was somebody, you called me Joe instead of Gramps, and I liked that. But I shouldn't have said I was Lash McGear. Yeah, well, I can't exactly act all high and mighty. Something I like putting in a letter, but I repeat, where the hell are you? My days are made bearable by Judy and Mitzi. Two gals Dad would have called the real deal. We yammer and laugh like there's no tomorrow. And guess what? There may not be. Judy reminds me of your Elizabeth, Joe. Then there's a man here, Wally Carmichael. And Joe, he is so much like my Harold, irascible pig-headed and utterly irresistible. <laughs> Last night he snuck into my room and we held hands and did the crossword puzzle. It was heaven. <laughs> then there's a nurse here, one of those unhappy types. Remember Mrs. Gunther across the street? Like her. I've been giving her hell and I'm fairly certain she's going to hasten my departure by reassigning me to a place they call the Twilight Ward. This next part is sort of personal. Uh, she ends, my love and strong intention of seeing you again in a better place. Your much younger looking sister, Helen. The Dingle. That was her married name. A P.S. There's an aide here. Uh, an aide, a kid named Kevin. A lovable felon if there ever was one. She thought I was lovable. <laughs> See that he gets my charm bracelet for his girlfriend. He's had his eye on it for some time. Done. <laughs> my goodness. She was something, your sister. Oh, she was. Always wanted to know about Larry. That was a coincidence. You coming here. Good Lord, son, put it together. <laughs> Oh, like on purpose, undercover. A little bit. Very Lash McGear. <laughs> Do any of you know, was she in the Twilight Ward at the end? No, she wasn't. She wasn't? She died before she was transferred. Oh, thank God. Yay, Ellen. You look peaceful, Joe. Not like some of them. That is the best Christmas present I've ever received. Okay, enough of that. Carpe diem. Rehearsal, anyone? Uh, Dee, can I make... 
Son, you're three wise men with your price of admission. <laughs> Uh, cool, because I was thinking, uh, maybe we could do the musical Hair, Long Beautiful Hair. Uh, you're out. <laughs> Kudos for bravery, though. Spoon River is next. Okay. Anybody have an epitaph? I do. do. Great. Now, remember what we talked about. These people are dead, but they've got something worth saying. So, self. Wally, you want to start us off? No, you start us off, Joe. All right. Lights. Lyman King. You may think, passerby, that fate is a pitfall outside of yourself, around which you may navigate by use of foresight and wisdom. Thus, you believe, viewing the lives of other men as one who, in godlike fashion, looks over an anti seeing how their difficulties could be avoided. But pass on into life. In time, you shall see fate approach you in the shape of your own image in the mirror. Or you shall sit alone by your own heart. And suddenly the chair by you shall hold a guest. And you shall know that guest and read the authentic message of his eyes. 